Life has always been pretty cheerful. This is made possible by my friends, family, a bright future at my university, and nothing bad happening in my life so far. Everyone I know has nice thoughts of me as I have for them. All my teachers and I get along well, and, despite having no other known relatives other than my parents, I didn't really care much. I always thought of my friends as brothers. I had, however, something I did for years. I, like many other people I know, am a 90s kid. I'm pretty sure even adults like those years too. Video games, simplicity, and good TV cartoons. Yes, good TV cartoons. So, the not-so-wish dream of becoming a cartoon tester got to me when I was just six years old. My parents accepted it and was delighted when I told them I wanted to be one. After all, it was the perfect job for someone of my age. So when people came to the house to ask my parents, I wanted to be it so badly. Nothing went actually wrong, so one afternoon, they took me to Nickelodeon HQ. I was so excited to see everything they were going to make before anyone watched it in the first place. My friends would be so jealous. So I stood there, in a room with a big TV and a DVD player, which is the first time I actually saw one, and like five other kids that were like me, expecting to watch cartoons all day. The room looked somewhat like a living room, probably to make us feel much more comfortable. It had a carpet, chairs, a table, potted plants, and a nice warm red paint on the walls. A staff member came out of nowhere with a CD and smiling at us. We're going to make a new series on Nick Jr., he said. If you like it, then we'll send the first season to your parents in no time, he said with a cheery tone. All the kids and me started celebrating as the man inserted the CD inside the DVD player. I'll be back in a while, he said with a bright smile as he left the room. The TV went on a static screen, which was odd since it was the newest they had selling that year. It went static for a while and started to show a warm fireplace burning. The camera then showed the whole room. No music was heard at all, nor did it introduce anything. The camera showed a chair faced out a window, showing stars in the night sky. The room looked warm and soft. A bald head was on the chair. It slowly turned, showing big, creepy eyes and a surprisingly realistic mouth. Me and all the other kids were surprised by him and his appearance, and awaited to see what happened next. A robotic and motionless voice stroked on the silence as the man said, Oh, I didn't see you there. The camera turned around, showing a crudely made CGI body that happened to be the man's. He greeted us and said, Hello, I'm Gregory, and this is my room. The camera zoomed on his creepy face. We're going to have so much fun together, just the two of us. He pointed at the window. We can look at the stars together. He held a book. We can read a book together. The camera went to the perspective of the fireplace as Gregory said, We can stare into the glorious flames of the fireplace together. The silence crushed instantly as all the kids looked confused and looked at each other. We waited for a while as Gregory's face stared from the chair into the fire. His face suddenly appeared again, and the camera slowly zoomed in. But, no matter what we do, it will just be the two of us, and no one else in this room. Just me and you. No parents, no police, no one can hear you. Distorted background music started playing as his face got closer and closer. Not only that, but his voice in the background itself started to get weird as transparent flames took over the place. Embrace me. I need love. Gregory needs love. The movie ended with his paralyzed face all over the screen. Every kid started crying uncontrollably as the man from some minutes ago came in. He had a very angry look on his face as his words pierced through my memory. You! I thought that guy just lesson long ago! What? He yelled furiously as he got out of the door along with the other kids. The screen went blank as I secretly heard the same. Someone playing text saying, Gregory's room. After a few days, there was some news about parents suing Nickelodeon for inappropriate content show. They even got as far as labeling the incident as a show that was ultimately rejected due to a poor focus group result. My parents were so frightened that they didn't let me get near the place, but we lived relatively near Nick HQ. Until then, I kept the CD with me, able to understand the meaning of such a dreadful creation.